Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week, we've got new Pirelli P0 tires, Wahoo speed play pedals. Finally, uh, new time trial tech, the bike vault, your upgrades, and our main talking point is time the UCI banned rim brakes. First up, it's time for last week's poll. We yes. asked, would you lease your bike if it meant you could upgrade? Yes, and 65% of you said no. It's divisive subject, wasn't it? Yes, mm. but that's 65% of the audience clearly being sensible and not deciding to live beyond their means. Mm. Good. Right, uh, on to our main talking point this week, which is, it's time the UCI band rim brakes. Right, this is gonna be a divisive issue, this one, but we're not ones to shy away from such things. Oh no. Now the UCI loves banning things. We know this. But there are legitimate reasons now as to why the whole propeloton should be on disc brakes. There are also reasons why they perhaps shouldn't, and we're going to discuss those in a moment. But first, let's have a poll. Should the UCI make all riders use disc brakes? Yes or no? Oh, and just to be clear, we're not saying that they should ban disc brakes for the rest of us, uh, just the pros in races. I mean, I love rim brakes. Yeah. I'm all about hashtag save the rim brake, just, just not the, the pros in pro races. Okay, so let's begin with the argument in favour of a rim brake ban. At present, most of the teams use disc brakes. Yeah. There are a couple of notable exceptions, Ineos Grenadiers in the men's and Alley BTC in the women's on their Cipollinis. And there are a few teams that use kind of a mixture. Uh, UAE team Emirates have, you know, in the last year, they've, they've used a combination. But the vast majority of teams are exclusively on discs now. And this does present a headache for neutral service yeah. because it means they have to accommodate both rim and disc brake wheels um, in that. Plus, all World Tour team bike sponsors do have a disc brake model available now. It's just some teams choose not to use them. Yeah, and there's a potential safety argument as well. And it's interesting because this safety argument used to be the other way around, but I feel it's now it's just switched. And that is that if you have a bunch of riders descending on the wet, yeah. and you've got most of them on disc brakes and then just a, a small number of people on rim brakes, yeah. you have significantly different stopping distances. And it's potentially hazardous if you're in a bunch and you're coming into a corner and there's certain people whose brakes don't engage straight away because they have to clear the water off the rim before the brakes bite. Yeah. And that, that, could, that could be a safety concern. What do you, it what do definitely you is. And in my last year of racing, we were a team that still used rim brakes. And it was just something I had to be aware of because, as you say, there are other teams using disc brakes and I just kind of had to adapt my riding style to suit that, really. It was just something I had to have in the back of my mind just to be aware of and adapt my riding to fit in to make sure I stayed safe and didn't crash. So if all teams use disc brakes, then life becomes simpler for everyone. And I am a big believer that in general terms, disc brakes are a bit safer. Yeah, I think life becomes simpler for everyone in mm. pro racing, yeah. but they are a bit more complicated to maintain. So, mm. yeah, we know people in the comments will be furiously writing that right now. But... Um, I think the other thing is there were some initial scare stories about the safety of disc brakes yeah. when they were first introduced into the Pro Peloton. There was a famous incident in the Aramberg Trench at Paris Bay, um, which was initially blamed on a rotor. It was actually someone was cut open uh, by a chain ring. Mm. Uh, there was also Owain Dool's shoe being Quite cut open that, yeah. initially again blamed on a disc brake rotor. It was actually later shown to be a barrier at the side of the road that caused that. So. The sort of safety concerns seem to, in terms of rotors cutting people, that seems to have disappeared now. Mm. And people regard them no more dangerous than, say, well, a chain ring on a bike and other sharp objects there on bicycles. Right, on to the arguments against, because you would need to give the teams, Ineos Grenadiers, enough advanced warning that they could gather all of the parts and stuff that they would need from their sponsors so they were prepared and ready to switch over to disc brakes. Yeah, you'd also need to give a bit of notice so that the riders who are not used to riding disc brakes could transition onto them and get yeah. practised on them so that they feel comfortable to race on them um, in that respect as well. But also, it, you might not have to ban them. Mm. It might be a waste of time banning them, banning rim brakes, because the switch might just happen organically anyway. You'd imagine that Pinarello is probably developing a, yeah. a disc brake model 
as, as we speak, that is the team are going to adopt when it comes out. And the weight is something that Ineos are clearly concerned about because their rim brake F12 bikes are right on the UCI weight limit, meaning that if they were forced to switch to the disc brake model, then they might be at a bit of a disadvantage compared to other teams. Yeah, you can imagine them feeling that way at the yeah. moment. So yeah, we'll have to see if, if a, new, a new bike does come out. But um, before you all accuse us of being part of some grand conspiracy against rim brakes and for disc brakes, we're not. No. Uh, you know, massive fan of rim brakes. We both have rim brake bikes, yeah. love them. But I'm also a massive fan of penny farthings, down tube shifters and Colnago masters. I just wouldn't choose to use iron any of that equipment in the Tour de France. But let us know your thoughts on this issue um, in the comments section below. I mean, disc brakes is just clearly where the R&D and the investment is and the future of performance bikes. God, this is going to get people fired up, isn't it? Yeah. <sighs> if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I restored my retro bike and it featured a modified fork. And whilst I test rode it, we only did some gentle riding on the flat and didn't do any extreme braking. And just to confirm, I don't recommend doing that to your own forks. And that bike is now safely tucked away in my garage and we won't be riding it again. It's time now for hot tech. And first up this week, Intermarche Wanty Group Gobert have got a new clothing sponsor. But interestingly enough, it's the first time we've ever seen a World Tour team have a time trial only clothing sponsor. Yeah, recognizing it as a separate discipline just shows how important the pro teams are now regarding mm. aero and how this has changed in as little as just five years, how much emphasis and importance they're placing upon it. And the partnership's gonna extend to custom skin suits uh, for the team, but also overshoes and gloves as well. It means that Louis Menkes, and the, and the rest of the team are going to get those amazing 3D printed, well, 3D body scan custom suits made that are absolutely rapid, like I got for the for the hour record. God. No pins have and do still make skin suits for other World Tour teams as well. This has kind of been on a bit of a down low basis just because of complications with sponsors and stuff mm. like that. But they also retrofit their transparent speed pockets into other skin suits that are designed to hold um, a rider's number in and have been a bit of a game changer, really. Yeah, that, that mm. first sort of appeared back in, uh, well, several years ago now on Yumbo skin suits. Mm. And, but yeah, they've become sort of a, a real commonplace thing. But it's interesting to see how this partnership develops. Next up, Pirelli have got a brand new tyre. It's called the P0 Race, and it replaces the P0 Velo, which is mounted on the bike behind us. It's a brand new clincher tyre. Uh, it's not tubeless, it's not gravel, which may surprise you, but Pirelli believes it's still a massive market for clinchers that take inner tubes and that's why they've done it. But they've made it faster than what they've done before. They also reckon it's faster than their uh, tubular tyres as well, which is pretty interesting. And it's an all-round performance road tyre, but very light. So just 205 grams claimed for a 26 millimetre tyre, which is very, very competitive. And if you want to find out more about it, we've done a full first look video. Uh, so check that out. Want to know the best thing about them for me? What? Oh, I can get them in tan sidewalls. Yes. God, I do love a tan sidewall. Oh. Seriously, hot take now. Wahoo Speed Plays are here. Check these bad boys out. Oh, yeah. They're seriously nice. Now, well, their full technical name is actually uh, Wahoo Speed Play Advanced Pedal System. Mm. Um, and that's because Wahoo acquired Speed Play pedals and they've now improved them. And this is the result. So, keen eyed viewers of, of GCN will know that I'm a big fan of Speedplay pedals. I use them on all my bikes. And that's for a number of reasons. I like the fact that you can clip in to both sides. I like the low stack height. Um, I like the aero version as well. And I like the adjustable float that you get on Speedplay pedals. Hmm. Wahoo have refreshed the look of these as well. And they do look fantastic. They're available in the Nano model with titanium axles, the Zero model with stainless steel axles, and the slightly heavier comp version, but that is more affordable. The cleats are no longer yellow. They're now black, uh, but there's, there's another cleat that's a gray cleat that's a light action cleat option too. But the changes to the pedals are not just cosmetic, even though the, the Wahoo branding does look very smart. They've improved the pedal as well. So the contact surface on the pedal has been revised with this uh, metal circular plate. The original design was 
had the occasional issues of wear on the pedals. Yeah. So to decrease that wear rate, that's been modified there. Also, the bearings have been updated by Wahoo, the needle bearings. And previously, Wahoo, uh, Speedplay pedals required quite frequent maintenance and greasing through an injection port, but they've put uh, updated seals on the bearings. And according to Wahoo, that frequent Speedplay maintenance interval is now a thing of the past. So low maintenance speed plays, they've improved them. I think that's really cool. Perfect. Another interesting little feature and update on those is actually with the pedal axle, because previous speed play pedals you had to remove using a pedal spanner. Mm. However, these ones have a revised axle, which is far smoother, sleeker, and more aerodynamic, and means they undo them with an Allen key at the back of the axle. Yes, that was uh, previously a feature that was on the aero pedals. Mm. I know that because I'm a bit of a speed play geek, <laughs> but uh, not on the, the dual sided pedals like these. But yeah, that is. That is cool, isn't it? Um, mm, God, I love that. Yeah, they're very, very smart. Oh, and um, hang on a sec. Oh, just, just one more thing. Uh, there's also, as we correctly predicted, going to be a um, a power meter pedal, too. Power link. Yes, um, but we we can't reveal more about that yet. That's exciting, though, isn't it? I'll tell you, it's exciting. I'm more amazed. A, that a power, got power meter speed. <laughs> we borrowed it off Columbo. Oh, Are you friends with him? Yeah. Oh, cool. Up next, something I spotted earlier in the week are some custom-made carbon cycling shoes, which appear to be made in the UK, but are currently in their testing phase, just being used by a couple of riders at the moment. And these follow a similar process to that of what um, Adam Hansen's custom-made shoes do, where they take a mould from your foot, then create a negative mould of your foot to make the carbon cycling shoe. And it kind of mimics the exact shape of your foot. So you've got a pair of shoes unique to you, and some of the prototypes that I've seen weighing in at just 70 grams for one shoe. So what's that, 140 grams for a pair? Oh, it'd be amazing to get a pair of those. Yeah. They do. do they have an integrated cleat like the Adam Hansen? Um, no, they don't have integrated cleat. You can cleat. fit whatever cleat you want You can them. choose what cleat fitting system you want, and then it's positioned in accordance with what they deem to be the most optimum position for that. So looking at the um, bone positions within your feet. Nice. Hmm. Oh, um, hang on. Oh, okay. oh, just, just one more thing. Um, I spotted some hot TT tech at Terreno Adriatico. Have you? Yeah, so oh. Jumbo Visma are using some interesting wheels, right? They're clearly taking it very seriously, and I'm under good authority that they've tested every wheel out there to find what works best with their bikes. And they, they've gone tubeless. Yeah. But they're using what appears to be, and I've had my magnifying glass out, um, a Roval disc wheel. Oh. that's badged up differently yeah. on the rear, which is tubeless disc disc. And on the front, they're using, for what in all, all intents and purposes, looks like it's an Aero Coach Titan front wheel, cool. which is recognizable because it is pretty much like the deepest wheel you can, you yeah. can get yeah. um, on a front. And no one else really makes anything that is that, no. that deep uh, to the point where the UCI rules go. But interesting how seriously they're taking all the all the tech side of things on that. Man. Good spot on that. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, more hot tech next week. It's now time for Snacks of the Week. Oh, look at this. But before we get going in Snacks of the Week, the Snack Police have been in touch and regrettably, I've got to inform everyone that Snacks of the Week will now be known as Snacks of Every Other Week with immediate effect. Snacks of the Fortnight. Yeah. Oh, Every other week. That's good news for my waistline. Very good. But what have we got this week for our uh, final weekly show? We have got. Oh my days. Brownies. Wow. Oh my god. So we've got salted caramel chocolate brownie and a dark chocolate tiffin. Dark very chocolate good. tiffin. I'll just read out the note very quickly. Alex and the GCN tech team thought you might like these a little bit better than the mixed pickles last week. Thank you to all of the team at GCN for great shows and loving the documentaries and racing on GCN+. Plus. Cheers, Helen, a.k.a. Rolly, which is the um, name of the company that make the brownies. Wow. Hmm. Thanks very much for those. We'll enjoy in those with our tea later on. Cha-ching! Time now for Screw Riding Upgrades by, by upgrades, upgrades, where you submit evidence or pictures of the upgrades you've made to your bike's equipment on Cycling Lives for a chance to win the ultimate prize, a GCN water bottle. Um, last last week, week, we had... Endegua 01's Ricky, Richie, Richie restoration against JMC Williams' Tom Simpson Peugeot restoration. It's Narrow quite cool, this one. Oof. Yeah. Close. 
51% went to JMC Williams, Tom Simpson, Peugeot Restoration. Yes, very, very close, but a, a, a worthy winner. Um, get in contact on Facebook and we will get your water bottle out to you. Well done. Who have we got up first this week? First up this week, we have got Blue Is Too Awesome. Interesting username. Their description is, a friend of mine loved what I did from my previous battle of depression and memory loss bike build. Post so much that they thought they'd commission me to bring their vintage Japanese bicycle that they've owned for 15 years back to life. So, I've got a lot of details here, so I'm not going to go through all of that. I mean, but it, it, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> this is a one of a kind piece of functional art. That unicorn on the bell is uh, is doing it for me. So, it's gone from a sort of plain, plain bike down to this, and it's the colours are unbelievable, aren't they? Yeah, it's it just look, well, it looks fantastic. Very um, well done, I got magical say. Mm. and a lot of gold going on. The blue tyres, wow, inspired. Yeah. And that's that sort of like oil slick effect on the pedals. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, really I like just that. love anything that's like upcycled like mm. that. I think it's just wicked. It just looks super smart and tidy, but who are they up against? Well, I mean, it's. It, it's it, well, 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 it's going to be tough this week. We've got an interesting it's submission. Because we've got a submission from Manon who's got her upgraded um, track, track bike, bike yeah. which, I mean, wow. So it's it's an old Fuji frame. And as you may or may not remember, Manon then stripped the frame down, clear coated it, um, prepped it, and with some help and guidance from Fat Creations mm. and Ali uh, over there, repainted it and it looks incredible. I mean, it looks amazing. She's put a custom Welsh dragon on there as well. I've seen this bike in the um, in the, in flesh, the video, well, in the paint, so to speak, and it looks bloody cool. And now she's also she did a video at the weekend. If you didn't see it, but she's she's built it up with some rather nice components, and has just got a nice single speed bike. But it looks ace. Um, I, I tell you what, I noticed. She said she built it up with parts that she just had lying around. Lots of people picked up that it was a pristine Durace crank set, and they were very jealous. Uh, yeah, parts that she just had lying around <laughs> yeah. that she actually stole off my bike that was in, in the, the, the shed. Oh. Um, we won't mention that, sorry. Bit of a sore <sighs> nerve there. So, yeah. yeah. Lying around. Yeah, well, it's not up to us, <laughs> is it? So head over to the GCN app and vote on your favourite. Right, it's now time for the bike vault. And seeing as the last few weeks we've done a quick fire special and you guys love it, let's do another one. <laughs> That's nice, we've got nice sense. or super nice. If they're super nice, I ring the bell. Yeah, and yeah. you can uh, vote on them in the app as well and submit them in the app. Uh, first up this week, we've got Orlando Biscotti with his specialised S Works SL7 Tarmac. What do you make of that? Exquisite. Beautiful, isn't it? Not um, in Biggie Smalls. No. Not in Biggie Smalls. That is a. That is a and, the, and the wheels, the tyre's not quite aligned. But I, I mean, can't. look at it. Look at the background. It looks amazing, but I can't let that slide. I'm sorry. We've Can been picking the standards up over the last few weeks. Speed plays. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Nice. Right. Nice. Next uh, up is from Graham Smedley with his Giant Propel SL0 disc. Yes. Um, what a beautiful sunset. Or again, is it sunrise? Beautiful. Yes. Nice mm. uh, barbed wire uh, fence post thing. I mean, not that looks like aligned. a World War I battlefield. Um, Crank's but, not aligned again. Oh. Beautiful bike, beautiful picture, but we've got too many emissions. I do like his lighting setup though, on the rear and the front. That's very smart light lights. Oh, but yeah. biggie, biggie, big, crank, weird, tight. No, nice. No, nice. Next Sorry. up, uh, Chow Chow with his Trek Monda SLR. Wow, that is doing it for me. That's yeah. um, that's Cote d'Azur near Nice. Good knowledge there. I wish I was there. It's like my favourite place to ride a bike. That's a super nice. Yeah, I'll go with that. You were confident, okay. George Teal with his 3T Strada. What do you make of that? Oh, that's cool. That Look, is cool. Love it. Look at how, that is the goldest chain I've ever seen. The goldest Just for that. gold chain. Super nice. Super nice. And who have we got last? Last one is Radlau Well. Replica. Close enough. Yeah, that'll do. Giant TCR 2001. Um, I mean, that is a suit. I'm loving the depth of field in the car park. I'm also enjoying the Amazing tire valves aligned. However, the tire, the front tire is mismatched with the rear tire. Oh yeah, totally different tire model, is that? 
God. That said, though, I think that's a, a very well prepared bike. And we can let that slide. Super it's a nice. slightly older bike. Yeah. yeah. Super, Super nice. nice. More Bike Vault next week. God, unfortunately, that's it for this week's GCN Tech Show. But do keep your Bike Vault submissions coming because we do love them. Yeah. And if you uh, would like to get your hands on some merch, then be sure to head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork for the greatest hoodies and t shirts available to humanity. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next week.